this is the Provoke Brawn, and this is the Audio Technica AT2035, a cardioid condenser microphone with an XLR connection. And this is an unboxing and review video. I'm going to be talking to you about what's included in the box, showing you the highlights of the microphone, as well as the setup process for it, which, as you'll see, I have it mounted on a boom arm at the end of the video. And I'll also be talking to you about the XLR interface and what I've been using. This is a $150 or £160 sterling microphone, an expensive bit of kit, but a very nice one. And to give you an idea of the quality of the microphone, I'm using it right now to do the voiceover for this video. So you can hear that it's really rich quality and great sound, very comparable with a Shure SM7B, which is what I usually use. And the first thing that I was struck by when I got it out of the box is the build quality. It's a really solid, heavy feeling bit of kit, a really nice premium feeling microphone and a really good looking one too. It is weighty though, and that is worth bearing in mind because it is 403 grams in weight, which is fairly hefty. And you'll need to bear that in mind depending on the boom arm you're using as well, because you might find that it's a bit too heavy for some boom arms and could cause problems. But it certainly isn't an issue with the Elgato Wave mic arm that I'm using for this test and it does a really good job there. Before I go any further I want to talk to you about the interfaces that I'm using. So for the purposes of the beginning of this video I'm using my Go XLR which you can see here, large preamp XLR interface. But later on in the video I'm going to talk to you about the Wave XLR and show the differences between them. I'm using the same settings that I usually use for my Shure SM7B with this microphone running through a Go XLR, so I'll leave those in the description. But it probably needs some tweaking because it might be picking up some background noise and also isn't quite as good sounding. It is a different microphone after all, so a slightly different setup. Included in the box, you get a little carry case that you can see there that holds the shock mount as standard, but obviously you can remove the microphone and put it in that little case if you so wish. It's a really nice highlight that they include a shock mount as standard but one thing that you will see is that there isn't a windshield of any sort so your microphone activity is going straight into the mic and one of the things that I've noticed is that it picks up a lot of plosives because of it and you might notice some of that in this video the shock mount itself also comes with a thread adapter so that you can attach it to your boom arm that's included in there and I'll leave all of the specifications in the description below but this is a very Nice, good quality setup. It's really nice to see a shock mount included. It's a good one. You can see it's easy to fit and easily adjustable as well. I've mounted it this way up, but you can also mount it upside down should you choose to do so. So you could put the mic in the other way around and have it coming out of the bottom. Now, this is a cardioid pattern pickup microphone, which means that you have to talk into the front of it. So you mount it and talk into the front. But what you will notice is there are also a couple of switches to pad out remove some decibels and also a low cut filter as well so you can adjust to compensate for loud noises or for changing the bass levels and adjusting the audio there i have it actually set to the standard settings now so there's not much on the microphone itself there's no mute button there's no gain adjustment there's nothing there it's obviously all controlled through your xlr interface and you don't even get an xlr cable in the box either so you're really just getting the mic and the shock mount a carry case so you're getting not very much for your money and a fair amount of money it's not the most expensive mic i've seen for example and yet it doesn't have much either you need obviously a stand to put it on or a boom arm and you need to get it off the desk and up close to your mouth in order to make the most of it as with any of these things obviously i'm using it for voiceover purposes but you might be using it for music or other recording they say it's a professional level quality and I am happy to agree with that from what I've seen. It does a really good job of capturing really rich audio. My voice sounds pretty good on this. Very comparable with the Shure microphone that uses standard. The only downside, the biggest downside I can see is the plosives. You know, it picks up a lot of that. And at the end of this video, I'll show some clips to show how close I am to the microphone. It could back off a bit perhaps to reduce that. But you do talk into the front of it and you can actually see where you talk into as well. Now I'm going to show you the process for mounting on the mic arm that I have. So this is the Elgato Wave mic arm. Included with that mic is this little metal adapter that you can put in there. And then you can set it on the standard thread 
of the boom arm and you obviously just attaching it to the shock mount, attaching the shock mount to the boom arm and then that means it's adjustable in a number of different positions. Really easy to screw into place. There are obviously a lot of other boom arm alternatives out there. I usually use Blue's Compass boom arm, very good quality, solid boom arms. And I recommend making the most of them and getting a good quality one to avoid any problems. But this shock mount should mean that even cheaper boom arms don't have an issue with interfering and letting those knocks go through into the microphone. And so you have got a good setup there for sure. And the end result is a really nice looking setup too. You can see where you're meant to talk into. You will be able to see that you can see through the metal mesh on the mic and actually see the inside bits of it. And I think that's really nice. Again, a point of note is the weight of it. You will notice that I've got the counterweight here on the arm and it actually manages to stay in position quite well, but it is a heavy mic. So it's worth bearing in mind if you buy a cheap boom arm, you might not be able to hold this microphone, might struggle with it, could potentially be a problem. But I really like the weightiness of it. It feels like it's really good quality. And it's actually an extra bonus. Now this microphone has a cardioid pickup pattern. It's frequency response of 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. And it's just really rich capture quality as well. And so the end result is nice here and gives off a good sound. As long as you get it close to your mouth and you can get the settings right on something like GoXLR or now with that XLR interface, then you should be able to get a fantastic sound just like I have. In a second, I'll show you what their recording capture quality is like with the Wave XLR, as well as a brief demonstration of how close I have it to my face while I'm recording this video, so you can get an idea of that quality, as well as a test for background noise. First thing I wanted to show you is in the GoXLR software, the settings that I have. I'll leave all these included in the description because this is a condenser microphone. We've got it set condenser plus 48, and it's a gain of 30 at the moment. Then you'll see the other settings here for gate, the noise gate, equalizer settings, compressor settings, and other things. So you can pause the video here if you'd like, or just check the description for this. As I said, this is what I usually use with my Shaw SM7B. So I just basically plugged in the Audio Technica microphone and just swapped the mics out from dynamic to condenser, just get a different microphone in there because the difference between them but as you can see the audio is great from that and here I am with the microphone you can see it's right next to me it's a very short distance at the moment and this is using the go XLR setting so you can see what the capture quality is like and if you talk directly into it it is a much better quality it's really rich in that way but what it does do is it picks up a lot of the plosives sounds which is obviously not ideal not what you want from the mic and that is there's no pop filter and there's no windshield and there obviously the additions of those would improve things now what i'm going to do is just type in the background the bonus of this is because it's cardioid pickup pattern it's basically picking up from this direction so towards the mic from behind me uh, anything from this side sound wise shouldn't get picked up as much so if I'm typing on a keyboard I'm using gatter on red switches on the Keychron K1 on a video on recently and hopefully you won't hear much of this noise if any obviously I have done some work with the GoXLR in terms of the noise cancellation settings there which will help with this but it is going to be reduced thanks to that cardioid pickup pattern the close pickup nature of it and you can tweak the gain levels if you are having problems with it really impressed with the sound of this microphone it's very rich and to demonstrate the difference i'm going to in a second show you what the short sm7b is like by comparison and this mic is four times the money near enough or maybe three times depending on where you are so it's a lot more expensive it's also my mainstay and highly respected by a lot of people in the industry. But I want to show you just the capture quality. So I'm not going to change any settings in the GoXLR interface apart from the switch to dynamic microphone. And I'm just going to switch these over so you can hear the quality difference. And now you should be able to hear the difference of the Shaw SM7B. And 
again a really rich sounding microphone this one does a great job of blocking out external noise again if i'm just typing in the background well the thing that i like about this is obviously also plosives plosives aren't picked up quite as badly by this microphone and it's got a good windshield on it it's actually an even thicker one included in the box and also once you've adjusted the settings it's just really natural sounding you do have to get it very close to your mouth in order to make it sound good and to make the most of it and perhaps it's not as nice looking as the Audio Technica, but it does deliver really good quality. But what I wanted to show you is the difference between them. This one has a richer sound to it in terms of more bass, and it makes my voice sound really rich. But the Audio Technica also does a good job of sounding really fantastic. Next step is to show you the Wave XLR interface, which is a lot more simplistic at standard level. Here I am running the Audio Technica microphone through the Wave XLR interface, which allows you to plug your XLR microphones into your PC with a USB C connection and a simple dial to then adjust the gain. So I've got it set to about 50% at the moment. And with the mic monitoring through this rather in your face colorful Logitech headset, I can hear a lot more background noise than I was picking up before. So probably noticing that. In the recording as well obviously you can do some tweaks to it and i could adjust the gain levels and turn it down and you can also change things like the mic monitoring level so if i turn the mic monitoring up and then adjust the gain down so i can definitely hear myself i can then see that i can still get a good quality and it's picking up less background noise. And if I start typing it again, just to demonstrate what's possible, again, the microphone's in the same place. And here I am typing on red switches in the background. So relatively quiet switches, not too obnoxious anyway. But I think this will probably demonstrate the difference between the Wave XLR as standard and the Go XLR with its custom settings. However, I am, as I said, going to customize the settings on the Wave XLR and do a video on that separately. So if you're interested in that interface, be sure to come back for more. But what I've hopefully shown you is the potential possibilities of this microphone and what you can do with it and overall the overall result, which is a really nice microphone with really good capture quality. The only downside is being the plosives. So I'd recommend getting a pop filter, maybe trying to find a windshield for it. But otherwise, fantastic mic for a great price as long as you can afford. Obviously, then stretch the XR cable, the interface and the boom arm as well. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.